Well, it's time now for Tech 24. It's been another wobbly week for the world's semiconductor industry. NVIDIA suffered the biggest one-day loss in stock market history, while Intel keeps making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Here to break it down for us is our technology editor, Peter O'Brien. Hi, Peter. Hi, Haxi. Uh, just this morning, Intel's reportedly trying to flog off uh, parts of its business. Tell us more. Yeah, the California-based giant, or maybe former giant has reportedly been looking at lots and lots of different ways to cut costs and try and get some desperately needed cash uh, after it's posted a terrible second quarter and announced it was going to be be slashing 15% of its war workforce. So as you say, just this morning, Reuters reporting that Qualcomm, another uh, chip manufacturer, is looking to buy up some of Intel's uh, design arm of its, it's got a design and manufacturer arms, some of the design part of it. And in Bloomberg, we've been reading lots of other ways about how Intel's looking to make some cash. So an IPO potentially for its units called Altera, which it bought nine years ago, or maybe even scrapping a political hot potato. That's a new gigafactory in Germany. So that would that would shore up some money for sure. Intel's CFO said on Wednesday the company was in talks with 12 different potential clients who they're hoping will shore up revenue over the next couple of years. He also said that Intel would be scrapping its current manufacturing process called 20A and skip, skipping completely completely to the next generation called 18A. Now, that's a bit technical, but it's important because it means that 20A manufacturing might be going to uh, be outsourced to its Taiwanese rival TSMC. Now, given that Intel's known for being a designer and a manufacturer of chips, it's not a particularly good look, especially as Reuters again reporting that, uh, that Broadcom, another chip maker, has been testing out 18A and it's not yet passed their tests. That's not the end to the tough questions, Haxi. Intel is going to be dragged before the US Senate next week, one of a few tech companies being asked about why there is American chips in Russian weapons. Meanwhile, uh, NVIDIA's had a rather scary week on the stock market. What's been happening there? Yeah, well, let's contextualize this one a little bit. If we look at where these companies' share prices started the year and where they are now, I mean, NVIDIA has just experienced obscene growth. Um, it was one of the most, it, was, it still is one of the most valuable ca companies in the world, uh, fueled by artificial intelligence. You can see here how it skyrocket comp skyrocketed compared to Intel. That's because the chips that it designs dominate the AI space, which has grown rapidly. Now what we're seeing is perhaps a bit of a correction to do with expectations around AI. That's what's caused NVIDIA to lose a fifth, which is a lot of its value since that 3.3 trillion dollar uh, valuation in mid-June. Tuesday this week was the worst day for them, a decline of 279 billion dollars <coughs> in market value. That's almost a tenth. And CNN put that in, into perspective for us. They pointed out that only 27 companies in the world are more valuable than the loss that they posted on Tuesday. So even companies like McDonald's and Pepsi are not as big as what NVIDIA <laughs> lost in one day. Partly fueling that decline was this Bloomberg, Bloomberg report that the US Justice Department, uh, Department of Justice rather, has su subpoenaed NVIDIA for potential, for, as part of an antitrust investigation. So what then is the picture across the industry as a whole, Peter? Well, it's still a thriving sector. And take the example of TSMC, which I mentioned. They're the world's largest manufacturer of, of chips. They're still in a sweet spot, growing by more than a tenth in Q2. And sales in the industry across uh, the board reached more than $51 billion in July. That's up almost 9%, uh, 19% rather from last year. And despite the wobbles at Intel, NVIDIA, uh, in America, that's where the growth... Uh, America as, as a continent is leading growth worldwide on chips. I have to say, it's a, a much more sorry picture in Europe. A 12% decline year on year um, was reported in July, although chips lobbyists in Brussels are now using that to try and tell, tell the, uh, the EU, give us some more cash and we can maybe get competitive. And remind us then, uh, Peter, just why these companies are so important. Yeah, so chips are in everything that we use in modern life our phones, our computers, of course, but also the mode of transport we use, our hospitals, our schools, they literally power the modern modern economy. So the 
more powerful we can make them, the smaller we can make them, uh, the more of them we can make, the further and faster society and technology advance as a whole. Um, they're used as particularly in a lot of these groundbreaking AI um, uh, sort of uh, applications to do with things like drug discovery, cancer research, uh, predicting forest fires, climate modeling. They could not be more important and it's also important to try and sort out this manufacturing bottleneck which currently is still passing through Taiwan a lot of the time.